Hey everybody, last but not least we're going to look at uh, the difference between two population proportions. Um, it's pretty similar to the difference between two population means. Again, what we're going to be doing, the intu intuition in all of these cases is that we're trying to figure out what the sampling distribution is, um, and then we're going to use that to construct our test statistic, which is just a modified score function, right, or t t score function if we, uh, if we don't know the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Um, and then we, uh, we use that test statistic and our result and our sample to try to calculate what the p-value is. Okay, and for two proportions, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit different. Again, what, with proportions, just like when we were working with one sample, uh, if you know the proportion under the null, right, or if, you, if you've assumed the proportion under the null, that implies assuming a standard uh, deviation as well. And so we're always going to be in a world where we have sigma known, essentially, Sigma known, sort of. Um, but so we are, we're working with two populations. We're doing a test of proportions. For now, and for for good in this class, we're going to work under the, the assumption that uh, we're going to assume that our null is about equality, is centered on equality. What that means is that we're looking for, we're only looking at differences uh, greater than, less than, or equal to one another, right? So, or that the difference is zero, for example. So, our hypotheses are going to look something like this: we're going to have left-tailed, two-tailed, right-tailed, but we're only going to look at uh, p1 minus p2 is greater than zero, p1 minus p2 equals zero, or p1 minus p2 is less than or equal to zero as our nulls, which gives us the usual. Uh, the usual alternatives for our tails. The reason we do this is that it, it simplifies the uh, it simplifies the standard deviation under the null a, a little bit enough. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you why. Okay, so we care about we care about the populations, right? We're going to define we care about population proportions. We're going to define p1 and p2 as our population proportions. And that's the proportion of population one. This is the proportion of population two. And uh, we don't know what they are, right? But we care about the difference. And so we use these to get P1 minus P2, which is the difference between the two populations. We can't know that, so we estimate like so. P bar one minus P bar two, right? That's our, and that's our, gonna be our point, our best point estimator. Now our, our standard error for the difference, what you call sigma, p bar 1 minus p bar 2 is going to be, yeah, it's this. Square root of p1 times 1 minus p1 over n1 plus p2 times 1 minus p2 over n2. And if these are the same, if we're working at the null of equality, what we do then is we say, well, we, under the null, p1 equals p2, under all the nulls that I wrote out, under h0, p1 equals p2 equals p sub 0, right, which is our null under the proportion, oh, which we'll just call p, right. That's going to be our hypothesized null. And it, it gives us, um, let's see, our new standard deviation then on, on those cases is going to be sigma p times 1 minus p over n1 plus p times 1 minus p, since they're the same, over n2, which simplifies to the square root of p times 1 minus p. We're just distributing this out times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. So it's a little simpler. That's why we're just focusing on those. It's what the book does, and in practice, generally, our you know usually we're testing whether there's a difference or not, and that's what this is really. These, these, this null gives us that test: is there a difference or is there no difference? And in particular, is one bigger than the other, or are they the, or is one smaller than the other? Okay, so under the null that they're equal, we assume that the overall population is equal across the proportions, but we don't know what it is, right? So we assume that p1 equals p2 equals p, which is the true baseline pop 
population proportion. But we don't know what this is. So we estimate this with what we call p bar, which is the pooled estimator. Pooled estimator is pretty easy. To, it's pretty intuitive. I'm going to draw the formula. I don't actually think the formula makes it as intuitive as it could be because it's really just the weighted average of our two proportions. This is what it looks like. P bar equals N1 times P bar 1 plus N2 times P bar 2 over N1 plus N2. Another way to look at this is that it's equal to uh, X1 plus X2 over n1 plus n2, where x1s are the number of people who have the property, right? So, if you want to know the pooled proportion of men, the pooled you know pooled proportion of men is men in group one plus men in group two over people in one plus people in two. And so it's like if you just treated them as one big population, it would just be the proportion of that big population. So you have the two separate ones, which are p bar 1 and p bar 2. And then you have the combined, the pooled estimator, the combined p bar um, pooled estimator of p, which is just sort of th thrown together in a big ball. Okay, now, once we calculate that, what we can say is that th this is what this looks like. Uh, standard deviation or whatever. This is p bar one minus p bar two. It's centered at p one minus p two, and it's got a standard deviation. Uh, p bar one minus p bar two equal to. Oh, did I lose something? I did a little bit. There we go. So we have this. This is the sampling distribution that I'm drawing now. Hold on. Oh. Okay. I lost my pen. Let's see if I can work this out anyway. The standard deviation is going to be equal to. Uh, 